Welcome back savages to another video. In today's video I'm going to be replacing this ASUS RT AX89X Wi-Fi router with a new piece of kit. So in this video I'll be going over the reasons why I'm getting rid of this router and upgrading, what the new piece of kit is and the reasons for doing that and also finally we'll be doing an unboxing of the new kit. So first off let's talk about the existing router. So the RT AX89X if you're a follower of the channel, I actually did an unboxing back in 2021. So I've had it for about three or four years and it's served me well up until this time. It's got the nickname, the spider or the crab, and it's absolutely huge and it has worked well. So this is a dual band router. Um, it's served me well for the last couple of years, but just over the last year or so, as I keep adding more and more crypto wireless devices to the network, it's starting to struggle. So I'm experiencing a lot of drop-offs from clients at the moment. I have a lot of monitoring tools and they're telling me all the time that certain clients, especially those that are a bit further away outside of the house, that could be in sheds or garages or in the garden, they're having difficulty connecting to this router because I've got that many devices connected. So I think it's time to upgrade. So you're probably thinking, well, if you've got clients further afield, then you should be using a Wi-Fi extender. And that's exactly what I tried first. So I purchased a pair of these ASUS RPAX58 Wi-Fi extenders. These are compatible with my ASUS router and you can create a mesh network. But these were absolutely horrendous. The drop-offs just from these extenders alone was enough to make me want to dropkick these into the bin. I got in touch with ASUS support. They were next to useless. So let me give you an example of just how bad these ASUS Wi-Fi repeaters are. One of these was placed about 10 meters away from the original router and after 24 hours it was dead offline. Any clients that were connected to this also went offline and it was actually worse having the Wi-Fi extender than it was without. So that's it with ASUS. I am done with anything Wi-Fi related that ASUS ever make in the future and we're now going to be upgrading to some proper kit. To summarize, these are the reasons for ditching ASUS. Clients dropping off, sluggish performance and signal reach. Again, this could be due to the number of clients I've actually got on my Wi-Fi network. I've got them spread out so they're no longer in the house. I've got things in the garage, in the garden. So the Wi-Fi signal is really stretched getting to those places. Sluggish performance, again, because of crypto projects, there's a lot of data getting connected to the Wi-Fi and going up and down. So again, that's gonna affect the throughput. But the single reason why I'm getting rid of this ASUS kit is because of the Wi-Fi extenders being absolutely garbage. You can have it in mesh mode or extender mode or any other mode that you can put them in. They just drop out after no time. And lastly, ASUS customer support. They've just been non-existent. They give you generic replies. And frankly, I won't be buying any more ASUS Wi-Fi kit going forward. So what are we going to be replacing it with? Well, I did a ton of research myself. I got in touch with YouTubers who specialize in this kind of thing and gave me their advice. And this is what I've come up with. It is ubiquity. So the kit I'm going with now is kind of high end, but it is a solid performer. And this was totally recommended to me based on the spec and the types of clients I've got on my network. So on the left, you've got the ubiquity Unified Dreambox SE, and that's the brains of the operation. So you do all your configuration and everything from that box right there. On the right hand side, this is where the Wi-Fi signal sent out. We've got the ubiquity U6 Enterprise. Now you're looking at that and thinking, hang on, why is he going for a U6 rather than a U7? So a U6 is Wi-Fi 6 standard and U7 is Wi-Fi 7, which is quite current at the moment. Well, the reason for that is a lot of the YouTubers that I spoke to said, stay away from U7s at the moment. The firmware's dodgy and you'll have worse performance. And a lot of the clients that I've got and devices like ESP32s only work on 2.4 gigahertz. So having the U6 should be able to be fine to cover both the 2.4 gigahertz bands and the 5 gigahertz bands. From speaking to some of the YouTubers, they suggested that the U6 Enterprise was the one to go for. It's a rock solid performer. It doesn't have any firmware issues. It's been out quite a while as well. And based on the number of clients I've got on my network, this should be a good solid performer and handle those 2.4 gigahertz clients. And with it being the enterprise, there's a lot more clients that can connect to it as well. Just before we proceed with the unboxing of the Ubiquiti kit, I just wanted to do a quick feature set comparison between the old and the new setup. So we've got the ASUS RT AX89X in the center. On the right hand side, we've got the combination of the Dreambox SE and the Ubiquiti U6 Enterprise. So first off, let's just have a look at Wi-Fi standard. 
So we've got Wi-Fi 6 for the ASUS. The Unify has got Wi-Fi 6, but it's Wi-Fi 6 extended. So it has that 6 gigahertz band as well. In terms of wireless speed at 5 gigahertz, pretty much the same. Wireless speed at 2.4 gigahertz, the Unify just has the edge on that. As I've just mentioned about the bands, you've got dual band for the ASUS. The Unify, even though it's sold as a tri-band, is actually a dual band really because the channels for 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz are combined. Next up is Ethernet ports and PoE. PoE stands for power over Ethernet. So for example, if you've got a CCTV camera, you normally would need to provide power and data to it separately. Well, with PoE, you can send it over one single Ethernet cable and have power and data sent over the same line. So for the ASUS, it had eight gigabit LAN ports, one 10 gigabit LAN connection, one 10 gigabit WAN connection, but there's no PoE on that one. On the Dreambox, well, we've got one 10 gigabit SPF, which is a faster kind of fiber connection. You've got one 2.5 gigahertz ethernet connection. So on the Dreambox, you've got eight gigabit ethernet connections. Two of those are PoE plus, which means you can send more power through them. And six of them are just regular PoE. And that's one of the deciding factors why I actually went for the Dreambox, because of the fact it's got PoE built in. For the U6 Enterprise, it's got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet, CPU, the ASUS has got a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz processor, whereas you've got a quad-core similar processor on the Dreambox, but then you've got a dual-core on the U6e. In terms of RAM, the ASUS has got one gigabyte of memory, whereas the Dreambox has got four, and the U6e has got two. Storage-wise, it's got 256 megabytes of NAND built into the ASUS, and the Dreambox has got 128 gigabytes of SSD storage whereas the U6e doesn't have any. In terms of security features, the ASUS has got WPA3, which is the same as a Unify kit. ASUS does have its own AI Protection Pro, which was an absolute nightmare. If you own CryptoKit, it was constantly blocking certain ports and certain bits of data going through. I ended up just disabling it while I was using it for crypto purposes. So that's just something to be aware of if you do buy an ASUS router like this. In terms of the Unify kit, you've got intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, advanced security features, and obviously it's got the same standard of WPA3. They've both got their own management apps. So next up, mesh support. Well, ASUS have got their AI mesh, which says it's compatible with other ASUS routers. It's not compatible with their own kit. I know that for a fact. Now, when I bought these two Wi-Fi extenders, which were compatible with this router and recommended, they simply did not work. I was having constant dropouts, and it's got to the point where I'm never going to be buying any ASUS Wi-Fi kit ever again. In terms of the Unify kit, they've got their own one called Unify Mesh Network. Initially, I will not be using it as a mesh. I'll be using it with a U6 Enterprise router and see how I get on with that. If I need to buy an extender, then I will try that afterwards. But initially, I won't be doing that. But it's good to know at least they've got their own Unify Mesh Network. In terms of price range, the ASUS is classed as mid-range. And that is fair, to be honest, because it is an all-in-one product. It's got eight antennas, it's got a decent signal and obviously a lot of LAN ports on it and it's got a lot of security features and a reasonably enough web interface as well. So that's classed as mid-range, whereas the Unify kit has always been known as high-end. Signal distance in terms of 2.4 gigahertz, both about the same. I'm hoping it'll do better with the U6e. Signal distance 5 gigahertz, both exactly the same, up to about 50 meters. As you'll probably know, 5 GHz always has a shorter distance, but it's a lot more intense. Number of devices. So again, this is another swaying factor as to why I got the Unify setup. With all the crypto projects and different devices I've got dotted around all over the place, I think I've outlived what the ASUS could handle, which is between 50 and 60 devices, whereas the Unify kit can handle up to 300 devices. So in terms of which is the better setup at handling 2.4 gigahertz clients, and that's more exclusive to me and my environment because I've got a lot of crypto kit and project boards that only work on 2.4 gigahertz and legacy kit. So for the ASUS, it's better for moderate to high density 2.4 gigahertz clients. So in terms of the Unify kit, it does say it's better for high density 2.4 gigahertz clients. And the majority of my clients will be on 2.4 gigahertz for some of the old legacy crypto kit. So in conclusion, the reason why I've gone for the Unify kit is it supports more devices because I've just got a lot more devices getting added all the time. It's better for high density devices at 2.4 gigahertz. I've got a lot of legacy kit that still works and I'm using daily. So this should help out with that. 
And the third thing, which is most important to me as well, was integrated power over Ethernet. So I've got a lot of CCTV kit. I can now hopefully integrate that into the Ubiquiti system as well and get away with these separate individual powering injectors that I used to buy before. We are now going to finish with an unboxing of the Ubiquiti kit, which is going to be the Dreambox SE and the U6 Enterprise access point. I'll just show you the various ports on the devices, etc. But I won't be going into the setup. There's plenty of videos out there that explain all of that in depth. Let's go. So here we are at the unboxing. So first off, we have got the Dreambox SE. Comes really well packed. It's a very heavy box. Good quality kit. So let's go ahead and open this up. First thing you see when you've opened it up is this box right here. So let's open that and see what's in it. So we've got our power cord, nice long cable on there. It's kind of braided almost, and that's the end of it like that. It's a kettle lead. We get some more connectors in there, and a couple of mounts like that. So let's have a look and see what's in here. You get a little box here. Ooh, very fancy. So you've got nice screws and some legs right here for connecting this to a rack, presumably. So yeah, it looks smart. Very nice, well presented. So next up, let's get the dream box out. Plenty of polystyrene to keep it all fixed. Never seen anything like that, that's very trippy. Check that out. I've got to say the presentation is awesome on this. Look how well that comes out. And there we go. Let's turn it around. It's got to be this way. How nice is that? So this is what the front of the UDM SE looks like. You've got a port right here where you can put a hard drive in there. You've got the screen display just here on the left hand side. Eight Ethernet points that have also got power over Ethernet built in. Ports one and two are PoE plus. The rest of the six are just standard PoE. You've got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection right here for your one there's also a one gigabit ethernet connection just here as well for the one if you needed that one instead and there's a fiber connection just here at the top there and just to mention there's a reset pin just there in the corner nice and slick looks very nice so you've got all the mounting points just here on either side of the unit this is the back of the unit You've got the power connection right here and there's a little switch here which can lock the power adapter into place so it doesn't ever come out. So that's pretty useful as well. So yeah, very impressed. Looks very nice. So I'm just going to power this up just to show you what the screen looks like just here on the left. So this is our power adapter which will be going just here. When we plugged it in there is a little notch on the side just there and that's where our locking mechanism keeps it in place. So we just push that in there goes in flush and then just put this toggle across and that's it locked that's not going anywhere so I've just powered on the dream box and connected to a power meter just there and I just wanted to get an idea of just how much power consumption it uses while it's loading up so just as the box comes without anything connected no network or anything else out of the box it uses around about 20 watts of power so I've got a network cable right here from the one. This is going to go into the 2.5 gig port on the Dreambox. In terms of cables, make sure you've got at least a minimum of a CAT6A cable. So you get some notification just here on the screen saying the one cable is now connected. And there we go. It's got one address, gives you the MAC address. 
and then you're ready to do the setup. I'm not going to go into the setup like I mentioned, there's plenty of videos on the web to go and do that. On to the next step, we're now going to unbox the U6 Enterprise Access Point. So this is the U6 Enterprise right here, that's the box it comes in. Got Enterprise written on the side there. So this is the U6 Access Point, like almost a half moon shape, very heavy. It's got a cover protector right there. It's kind of like in a nice matte white colour, nice finish on it, very impressive. So this is what the back of the U6E looks like, right here. And access to the port is just here, there's a rubber insert just here, so we can pull that off. Nice and chunky, so that can come off. And if we look in there, we have got an Ethernet port right there. So it says on there, PoE plus Ethernet for that one single port. So we're going to be using one of the ports from the Dreambox for this particular access point. And then just to the right of it, we've got a reset switch. So nice and simple and very clean to use. So next up, we've got a template, which they give you for drilling the holes in the wall of the ceiling. They also give you a little spirit level in there. How's that? Very nice. This is the back plate that would go on the wall of the ceiling and there's plenty of options, plenty of cutouts. We've also got another metal plate right here, so we'll figure out where that goes. And then there's a box of accessories right here. If we pull this out, just look at that. How well presented is that? Impressive. So that's all your wall mountings and screws. And finally, just a little bit of documentation. They give you a QR code to download information from the web. And there'll be a little user guide just include there. If you remember when we were doing the unboxing of the Dreambox SE, that ports one and two at PoE Plus, well, that's what you're gonna to need to power one of these beasts. Just remember when you've got the ethernet cable connected to the U6E, the other end is either have to go to port one or two of the Dreambox SE, because it's going to need that much extra power through PoE+. Plus. So I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but when it's powered up for the first time, there is like a blue glow just coming from this inner circle right here. So there you go, savages. That was just a quick video on why I'm ditching a SUS kit for Unify. I hope you like this unboxing of the Dreambox SE and the U6E and the reasons why I've done that. But if you have any other questions you'd like to ask me about this video or the setup, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching and I'll see you savages on the next one.